I'm looking for anything that moves or might move. Um, so I'm particularly interested in the animals on the seafloor, the benthic animals. Um, most of them don't have a backbone, so we're looking at things like the snails. Um, there are at least two species of snails with different colour morphs that I'm trying to locate and log. Um, looking at all the crabs, in some cases there might be some mussels, but we'll need to get a bit closer to the seabed to confirm that. Lots of shrimp, there are some things called scale worms that are quite funky. That's probably, that's probably the main organisms I've been logging. I think if I was a shrimp I'd probably be freaking out just a little bit having something so bright considering they live in complete and utter darkness. But they don't seem to be bothered by the research that we do. They're not swimming away, they're not changing as far as we know their natural behavioural patterns. And they have done research studies to see the effect of light on shrimp over time and it looks like we don't cause them any harm, which is good news. We've developed this system for the better part of two years and it is a joy to see everything working. Everything works. We have not let anything down. We want to try out several things on this cruise. So we have a number of different cameras here. We have the highly sensitive video camera. We have the photo camera that takes high resolution stills and we have also um, a stereo camera system. This is a collaboration with Anne Jord from Geomar. The goal is to use stereo reconstruction jointly with a multi-beam echo sounder. And the principle behind the stereo camera is that we have two different perspectives onto the objects that we see underwater as with the human eyes. And from these different perspectives, we can reconstruct the 3D position information of the things that we see. And by using the navigation data from the robot, we can then build up a three-dimensional point cloud, which represents the seafloor. At a later stage, we want to put this into a geological, biological or geochemical context and make big models out of this and do interpretations of this. Right now we are doing um, what we call mowing the lawn, which is uh, surveys back and forth to photograph um, as much coverage of the uh, of the seafloor in the crater as possible. The pilots are following uh, predetermined survey lines, um, but the, the topography here is so variable because of all the chimneys um, that it's somewhat slow going because we want to maintain a certain height above the seafloor um, so that we can illuminate the seafloor with the flashes for the to topography. But we also have to fly up over these uh, chimneys which we're coming across, um, which can be up to 10 or 12 meters high sometimes. And the work we're doing now, while it can be, it can seem tedious because you're driving lines and mowing the grass, so to speak, on the seafloor, it's actually quite difficult because you're watching about 10 different things at the same time. So it can be, uh, moments of tedium inter interrupted by moments of sheer terror as you're just about to crash into something. RV bridge. Yeah, that's Robos moving off on the next line to the northwest. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, just for your information, I'll probably move ahead about 40 degrees to starboard to follow you on that next line. Roger, roger. Robos on the move. Here we go. My expertise is structured light, so we use a laser line which is projected onto the seabed and then with a camera that is capturing these laser lines we can estimate the depth of the, the seabed in respect to the camera. Depending on the height, the, the laser line is at a different position in the uh, camera image and with that information and uh, navigation information from the vehicle 
we are able to do a full 3D reconstruction of the seabed in very high resolution. We haven't seen the results of this, but it's very exciting to be able to, in the end, visualize what we've built here because it's a, a lot of money and a lot of work and a huge effort by all these people to put this together. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to seeing the results of this walk through of the subsea volcanic crater. Um, well, I, I still think it's amazing, and maybe because I'm new to all this, but I think it's incredible that we can go to these areas that no one's been to before and still discover things. And we've been doing science for hundreds of years, and to still have that essence of discovery is amazing. Um, and to be some of the first people, maybe even some of the only people, to ever see these environments and these animals, um, and to be the first people to shine a light on something, I mean, I think it's incredible.